My name is Marty, and I'm a volunteer at the National Museum of the United States Army. You know, I was very excited uh, when the museum was first proposed, and I, I was actually one of the, the founding sponsors. And it really just reflects, honestly, my, my love of the Army and uh, my love of history. And for the two things to come together uh, this close to home, I, I live in Springfield, so the museum is literally about five miles from my house. So it, it's awesome. So I really thought long and hard about it. And I think um, to me, uh, Grant's forage cap is really uh, an artifact that, that resonates and I think is my favorite uh, because of, of who it represents and the fact that that's really kind of, you know, that kind of uh, dressy apparel really was not typical of Grant. He was known, you know, throughout the Civil War for wearing a, a private's coat and, you know, normally a, a very nondescript kind of slouch hat. So when I first saw that hat, it was like, gosh, that doesn't seem like Grant. But the fact that it was a gift from one of his aide de camps uh, kind of provides some background to it. And then as you read about Grant and, and the years that he was out of the Army between 1854 and 1860, uh, and you know the hard times that he experienced in, in both the St. Louis area and then in Galena, and there's a lot of descriptions of, of Grant still wearing his old Army blue coat uh, from, from his time in the Army after he graduated from West Point, um, you know, to, to the time he came back into the Army in 1861. So um, that is my favorite artifact. You know, it's really the people, uh, much like my time in the Army, what I really uh, enjoyed and relished the most was the people. And and really, there's three groups of people uh, being a volunteer at the museum. First, first of all, is the museum staff. Uh, through our training and the COVID interruption, uh, the museum staff has just been terrific at, at training us and explaining things to us. Uh, second is the other volunteers. Uh, I have learned an awful lot from the other volunteers. Uh, and their uh, areas of expertise and knowledge in the galleries. And then finally, and, and probably most obviously, are the visitors. Uh, interacting with the visitors, uh, many of them also veterans, uh, but, but has really been a very positive experience. <music> to me, it really goes back to the Army uh, origin story and the fact that the Army, uh, you know, from, from 14 June 1775 uh, predates the country and is older than the nation. And, and a lot of people, you know, just, just don't know that. So I think from the very beginning, uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Army and the history, uh, there, are, there are things that they learn from the founding of the Nation Gallery uh, onward when they visit. You know, I grew up on a farm in northwestern Illinois, and uh, I had an uncle who was in the Army and an uncle who was in the Air Force, and my dad stayed on the family farm, so, so service members were always kind of our family heroes. And uh, from a very early age, and a little bit of it had to do with my, my early like of history as well, uh, all I really wanted to do was to be a soldier, and I'm, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to do that for 30 years. Uh, one was as a, as a young lieutenant in uh, August of 1990, uh, I led one of the convoys from Fort Campbell, Kentucky to Jacksonville, Florida, uh, as part of our deployment for Desert Shield Desert Storm. And, you know, just, just the thought of driving uh, or leading a, a convoy of soldiers and vehicles uh, through our nation's interstates at, at 45 miles an hour. And we stopped every two hours, uh, regardless of where we were and took a rest break and, and whatnot, um, was an experience I'll never forget. And the overpasses were, were for the most part lined with people uh, showing their appreciation and support for the military, uh, waving flags. Uh, and it was just kind of something I would have never expected to do uh, and even when I taught history at West Point uh, later on, it was it was something I shared with the cadets that, you know, here, here was uh, this kind of cross-country experience um, 
that, that just really made an impression. Uh, and, and to see the support of the people uh, was, was also tremendous. Uh, the, the other story I would share, fast forward uh, to the summer of 2007, and I was in Iraq as a battalion commander with the 101st Airborne Division. And we unfortunately had uh, several soldiers who were seriously wounded in an IED attack. And uh, it happened late in the afternoon and uh, early that evening in the hours of darkness, uh, the, the local medical facility uh, let us know that they were in uh, they were in dire need of of blood to uh, assist taking care of those wounded soldiers, and I would tell you that every soldier in our battalion lined up outside the medical facility uh, to give blood uh, and make sure that their comrades uh, had what they needed in their their hour of need, uh, and I'll I'll never forget that uh, the the line of soldiers and the willingness to do that you know at a moment's notice. Uh, for their fellow soldiers, and I, I just thought that was um, uh, symbolic of, of soldiers' uh, love and support for each other. And then a, a couple weeks later, uh, one of our partnered Iraqi battalion commanders uh, similarly was, was seriously wounded, uh, and he had a fairly rare blood type. And once again, a call went out, uh, but this time they needed that specific blood type and we had several soldiers in the unit who had that type of blood uh, and once again volunteered and, and gave blood, uh, this time not to a comrade, but to, to an ally. Uh, and again, just, just the service and sacrifice that, that represented uh, made a tremendous impression on me. Uh, really, the opportunity that the Army represents um, you know, I, I joined the Army as a 17-year-old high school graduate, and when I retired 30 years later, uh, I had a bachelor's degree and two master's degrees, and I, um, you know, been, been to a variety of other schools and courses, because uh, the Army really is a, a learning organization and a learning institution, and, and the opportunities it provided uh, and the experiences, uh, certainly there's, there's, service and sacrifice uh, but again for a for a, a kid from a small town in illinois and a farm boy uh, the army really um, was it was a door to the rest of the world how comprehensive the museum is in telling the army story again through those artifacts uh, that tell a soldier's story and then cumulatively that tells the history of our army and that the history of our army is, is the history of our nation. And people appreciate that and people appreciate what a wonderful facility the museum is. Uh, and with, with our opening and then closing and then reopening, uh, they all, and I think all of the volunteers as well, appreciate the opportunity to share the museum with everybody.